Drag race to the top of the hill. Whoa, man, McMurray's in trouble. Seen that happen so many times. The blue flag waving means there is a car off course. Now there are two. Bobby Labonte is around. Happens almost every time we come here, that little chain reaction. He's going to get back. Kurt Busch, or, uh, uh oh, got another car around over here coming through turn eight. Oh, no. Oh, no. hard no. lick. Kenny Man, Schrader got Sterling it. Marlin in the 14 car, and they're still stacking up. Casey Mears. One car, T-Bone Schrader, extremely hard. Oh, it was an incredible lick. That's Tom Hubert in the 27 car. Tom Hubert nailed Kenny Schrader. Turn yeah. nine. Yeah, the 21 car gets sideways. I don't know if he got help or not. We'll see here momentarily. I don't think he did. Carl Edwards didn't touch him. Kenny just spun the car, got up on the curb. But man, when he comes back out in the racetrack, the melee breaks loose. And you can see Dave Blaney getting in the back. And look at Jamie McMurray, the guy that sat on the outside pole because of what happened up there in turn two. He was almost involved in it. Brainless moments happen all the time. You could be walking down the street and you may fall down. You may fall off a curb. You may fall down the stairs. But it's pretty rare in NASCAR for not one, not two, but over half the field to have a brainless moment on lap one of a race. And this is exactly what happened during the 2006 Sonoma race. And the five's going to chase him in, to your point, Jeff. He cannot allow the 12 to get a lap. Look at the five gain to the rear bumper. Oh, the, 12. Oh, oh. the five into the water. The barrier's right at the end of pit road. He slides into him, damage to the right front. That's going to bring the yellow out. They're going to have to throw the caution to be able to repair those barriers. What well, sand in him, you see this. Look how much he's gaining on him, and he has no choice but to turn right or run into the back of Blaney. He turns right and gets the end of the pit wall. Just so, to way too much speed here. And heavy, heavy damage with these barrels. Having a stupid moment in NASCAR doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it makes for some great entertainment. Just like when Kyle Larson overdrove the entrance to Pitt Road at Homestead Miami Speedway, sending him into the barriers, ending his shot at the victory that day, and ruining his shot at winning at Homestead. Denny Hamlin may be NASCAR's biggest choke artist. He's lost races and championships over the years that he definitely should have won, but this one was definitely not on him. It still blows my mind, even to this day, that his crew chief thought putting this big of a piece of tape on his front grill would give him extra downforce and would not blow the engine. It just blows my mind that this was still even an option. Chris Gabehart told the team to put the piece of tape on it, and it did not work. Shocker. They put a massive piece of tape on the grill. Last time down, Steve, it's getting cooler. You can see all that tape they put on the left side. Denny said the water temps are now pegged. The oil at 345, oh. and he said, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make the engines, not going to make it to the end of the race you can, if we're doing this pace. So here is the crew member right here putting it on. And that is a, I mean, that's half the grill yeah. they've covered right there. Wow. Why didn't he come to pit road now, though, Steve? Why, why is he going to stay out? Denny said, we're not going to make it. They're coming to pit road, guys. Denny Hamlin's championships may be over. He told Chris Gabehart, I'm not coming down pit road. You make that call. Tell me if I need to come down. Just so crushing for Denny Hamlin, this 11 team, the slow roll down pit road, and it's just spewing water everywhere. They're going to get the tape off of it at this point. Just going to salvage what they can salvage here. Ford to Goodyear tired, but man, look at all that water it's losing, Steve. I don't know how long that thing could last when he's going to go back out on the racetrack. He needs to get back out there, get the temperature down. You saw the tape pulled off once again. That tape was put on the last pit stop. It was a calculated change that was put on in error. They definitely don't want to cover that much of the grill. We talked about how big... Over the years, Michael McDowell hasn't been a driver that has always rubbed me the right way. Michael McDowell has just been one of those drivers that he's either a hit or miss for me. And for Alex Bowman, it was a big miss, especially during the finale race in 2023. He just, I wouldn't say blatantly, but just drove into Alex Bowman like he wasn't even there. Crashing Bowman out. Just weird. Off a of turn two on the inside of the 38 of Gillen. And wow. Oh my Coming up the racetrack, Michael McDowell right into the door. I think Michael didn't realize that there was a car on the outside of Alex expecting Alex to come up off the corner a little bit wider on corner exit. Real hard contact there. Luckily not, it didn't look like a really hard direct impact to the inside wall, kind of a glancing blow. 
Entering his 2016 season, Jimmy Johnson was looking for his record-tying seventh championship. He ultimately got the championship, but the road wasn't easy. He sped on pit road at Chicago Land, ultimately hurting him in the playoffs. And two weeks later, he had another penalty while leading the race. Championship caliber team cannot continue to make these mistakes and think that they are going to win a championship. That's, that's why we have been critical of this team. They've certainly found their speed, but they don't execute like a Chad Canals, Jimmy Johnson team. They continue to make these mistakes. Over the wall, it's kind of hard for me to see, but see if NASCAR will be kind of descended to us. He is clearly touching the pit box. You're not allowed to be in the pit box before the 48 gets to that red line that's superimposed. There's also a little white dash that the crew members could use. That is there for safety. They don't want the crew members in the pit box before the cars get there because say a car gets spun out. We see that all the time. If the crew members were able to just climb over and kneel and wait, they would be defenseless to a spinning race car. He's now backed up to McDowell. Half a car length to the leader, it's Logano. Gonna go. He's got to go to the bottom. Oh! And he can't get there, and he wrecks Logano. Logano blocked. Logano moved down blocked. I, I hate to say it, he was under him and got a pretty big block right there. You knew it was going to be aggressive, and unfortunately, cost him. You can see him backing up a little bit here, gets the push off of Michael McDowell, and sets this up for the exit of turn two. They clear David Reagan, goes for the move to the inside, and I, I, I called it, and, and I knew Joey moved down to make a block. You knew he was going to have to. When the next gen car got debuted, the biggest thing about this car was about the safety it was about the lack of parts. This car sounded doomed from the start. If you wrecked this car, you had a very slim chance of getting a backup car. And in the Daytona dual race before the biggest race of the year, Joey Logano throws his typical stupid blocks on Michael McDowell, wrecking himself, costing his team a huge amount of money and a backup car. You're exactly right, Daryl. Harvick had slowed. He was trying to get to pit road. And Earnhardt Jr. going. All likelihood, there will be no more racing, so Petty will come by now with one lap to go. And behind Petty, Cale Yarborough is turning off and heading toward Pit Road. Hard to imagine what is going through Cale's mind. He can sacrifice second place if he makes a pit stop here, but Petty has the lead with one lap to go. Then uh, I misread the flag with swingers, and uh, when, when we came down uh, for the caution flag there, I thought the race was over. Uh, and I guess my brain blew up is what happened. I just, just a dumb thing for me to do. And I came in, which lost more positions. That was a really, really slow start. That could have been one of those starts that just turned people down. Oh, just right there, the next turn. Right there. Like that. Just like that, man. Just exactly like that. Watching the flag stand still under green. No harm, no foul, because he's far enough out of the way. Might be the ticket here. Yes. He's close enough, Carl. Yes, he is. Both of them. Look at that. Right That's exactly what oh! And around goes oh. Truex. Not that much pressure. Still. Oh. Can he keep it going? He's going to spin around. Oh, my gosh. Caution waves to end the stage. First off, let's talk about the finish of the race coming down pit road. Well, you know, they wrecked. The spotter said, uh, man, they're wrecking all over the front straightaway. And this is getting into three. You're coming to the yellow. So, um. So we checked up, of course, and I, and I pulled down pit road. I figured the racetrack was just scattered, and I pulled down pit road, and I kind of hesitated a little bit. And I came in, and one of the officials pointed to me to pull down here to the pit box, so I pulled the pit box. And then uh, then they said, you need to get by the start finish line. So I, I don't know, you know. It, it, I look like a dumb, dumb guy for what happened, but I should have stayed on the racetrack, you know. Should have stayed on the track. All right, so in this clip, you can see that Kevin Harvick is trying to get to the pits, but has a little bit of a brain fart and accidentally turns the most popular driver. Dale Jr. was trying to get in the pits, and, uh, or somebody was. There, was there, there we go. Almost like maybe Kevin Harvick was Harvick down was trying, trying to get, to get, the get the in the pits. Car. And, oh, that's it. I'm telling you, that that's is a brutal a, hit. It is. Kyle Petty just squeezes through there, has to go to pit road to take evasive action. So does Jeff Gordon. That, 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 I don't like the looks of that. All the cars have now taken the caution flag and rescue workers come to the aid of Harvick and Earnhardt Jr.
move there. Clear by two in the 48, one out in the 42. I think he could. He was behind that car and he couldn't see. And I think when he went to the inside, he clipped the. Uh, it, it, I think that it clipped the grass. What about when Dale Jr. decided to clip the grass, entering turn number one at Texas Motor Speedway, sending his car into a blaze of flames? Dale Jr. clips the inside grass, and the grass was extremely wet because it had rained overnight, sending his car into the wall on the entrance of turn number one at Texas.